love is a precious feeling. However, some people do not consider those who love them truly from the bottom of their hearts. They deny every single emotional reaction from them. On the other hand, loyal persons remain faithful till the end, no matter how is not fair for them. In most cases, they ended up victimized due to their kindness. George and Anna are a married couple. While George loved his wife Anna sincerely, she did not love him in return. All Anna was interested in was her husband's money. She was selfish and deceitful. George was a famous man. He was a successful businessman. George had a big wealth the matter which attracted Anna's attention to him. Anna mainly came from a poor family. She was greedy because of the poverty she suffered in her early childhood. She became such a greedy object, she was ready to do anything which would enable her to get rid of her miserable life. Anna was George's secretary. George was a man of principles and morals. Although he was rich, he was not extravagant, nor was he trivial. George was a handsome gentleman. There were many girls who attempted to flirt with him, but none of them succeeded in winning his heart. At that time, Anna came to seize his heart and emotions. Anna was cunning and intelligent. She got a full knowledge of George's character and of his likes and dislikes. Anna was disguised under a completely different character than her true one. Anna was not easy. She pretended to be a polite and inexperienced girl so that she could make George love her. In fact, George wanted to be in a relationship with a girl who had no previous experiences before him. George was a straightforward man who had no intention for being deviated or being corrupted by any bad woman. He cared for his good reputation all the time. After Anna started her work with George, just for a short period of time, she managed to make him fall in love with her. She treated him kindly and softly. She seemed careful about his interests and profits, and it was always helpful and dependable. George began to depend on her in everything, even the color of a suit. When George got sick and did not go to the company, Anna was the first person who contacted him and visited him immediately. She always told him sweet words. For example, she said, what a real man you are, Mr. George. Your character is amazing. It's difficult to describe it through the words. You impress me every now and then with your kind actions and incomparable values. I'm always dreaming of meeting and working with a man of a big heart like you. I really appreciate this coincidence in which you let me know to be true with you. My life is a tragic one. My father died when I was too young to leave me live alone with my sick mother. My mother could not work for long hours to buy me things as she was ill. Her wage was not enough to make me enjoy a happy childhood as all my friends at the school. So I became unhappy and aimless. Yet I insisted on completing my study perfectly regardless of any bad and unfortunate circumstances. Lots of gentlemen admired me when I became a young lady. But I refused to be in any love affair as my father taught me some rules and morals which I cannot let behind my back. At that time, my study was the most important thing in my life until I was finally graduated and worked in your company. Oh, I'm sorry Mr. George for bothering you with my personal affairs. I didn't mean to cause any kind of noise for you. Excuse me. It was not a long time since George became fond of Anna's talks and conversations. In other words, the smart girl charmed him with her delicate way of talking and sweet tone of voice. George sympathized with Anna's unsatisfactory social situations. Yet his sympathy with her was turned into a true love. George fell in love with Anna. George could not wait to reveal his love for her. George expressed his great admiration for Anna when he stated, You are the angel which God sent me in order to fill my life with happiness and give it a cause to lead to make it worth to live. I am awfully thankful for him. To be frank with you Anna. I pitied your unhappy life. But after that I start loving you. Addicting. You being charmed with you. I've been leading a sad childhood too. But not because I was poor, but because I was older. Lonely. My parents were usually busy with running their firms and institutions. They never cared about me as a child who was known in a need of care and attention. I was waiting for them for giving me love and compassion. But they were absent most of the time. It was rarely that they came to me clarifying to me how much they love me. Their excuses were that they work hard to secure a safe future for me. But the real and painful truth was that they were unaware of the fact that they tortured me and harmed me with their indifference and carelessness. So I became completely lonely. Since I met you, you allowed me to be hopeful and optimistic. I really love you Hannah. I want to enjoy the rest of my life with you. I wish you would accept to be my wife. I promise you to make you happy for eternal. George and Anna got married. They had a child named Jack. Anna's treatment with George was completely changed. After George's legs were broken due to a serious accident. 
she started receiving strangers in the house. She was an opportunist. She knew very well that George would never be able to know her infidelity as he was completely an infant man. Also, she saw that Jack was a young boy who she could tell lies to easily. She thought that Jack was still young and that he would believe her at once. Nevertheless, Jack was aware of everything. He didn't believe his mother when she told him that those strangers were her work friends. Though Jack was only 13, he realized his mother's permanent cheating for his father. Jack loved his father George very much. He preferred not to tell him anything about Anna's unfaithfulness in order to not hurt him. Jack's life was turned into complete darkness after his father died. Yet he thought that he must be a great doctor and his father wished. Jack studied hard and joined the faculty of medicine. He became a doctor. However, his mother planted seeds of hatred for any woman into his heart. Jack believed that all women were deceitful and cheating like his mother. A colleague of Jack named Katie fell in love with him. Jack thought that there was no thing named true love. He did not believe Katie's love, even though her feelings were completely sincere. His mother's bad actions made him blind of truth. Katie stated, I love you truly, Jack. Believe me, I'm not bad as you think. I'm a human being after all. You must give me a chance to prove my loyalty for you. You must not prejudge people around you. You must be more flexible as there are bad people and there are good ones too. You must accurately differentiate between those who may have bad intentions against you and those who love you. Good exists as evil does. We're not living in the woods where animals are plotting against each other and chasing each other. It's not a competition where there's a winner and there's a loser. We're human beings whom God granted so beautiful blisses and gifts to enjoy. Listen to me carefully, Jack. Give yourself a chance to communicate well with people. I'm ready to do anything that may prove my honesty for you. Jack did not believe the girl. He thought that she lied upon him. Jack started fitting up with Katie by chance. He saw her talking with another doctor in the hospital and he went crazy after that. At that time, he was sure that Katie was cheating. When Jack confronted Katie, she defended herself, saying that this doctor was in love with her, but she loved Jack only. She told him also that she was trying to convince this doctor that she loved another man so that he would never flirt with her again. Jack pretended to believe Katie, but he decided to take revenge. He asked Katie to visit him in his clinic to make a checkup for her as she was a little bit sick. At first, Katie was worried and she was about to refuse, but she decided to visit Jack. But she took a camera with her. As Jack might go crazy and nervous at any time, Jack asked Katie to lie on the bed so that he could check her. Jack began strangling the girl mercilessly, Katie shouted aloud, but nobody heard her. As the place was empty, Katie did not give up. She holds her bag and hits Jack strongly on his head. She told him that there was a camera which took videos of everything that happened. Jack cried. He begged Katie not to inform the police. Jack narrated to Katie the cause behind his despise for women in general. He told her the story of his bad mother and how much she affected his attitudes and actions badly and negatively. Katie sympathized with Jack. She promised him to help him and support him. Thanks to Katie, Jack became a normal person. The moral of the story is that good people are those who remain by outside and hard times and that we must be in a good touch with them throughout our lifetime.